choice two are third of September twenty twenty. First half hour. First. First. Uh, yeah. Is only forty five. Action. Well done. Okay, I now have a deputy child. In case headmistress is not here. Right, going. Yes. Who the hell is Fishy Winters? Ethan. <laughs> yeah, Ethan. <laughs> fishy Winters. Is that the same one on Zoom or whatever? I've got the ice bear in the other class, and now I've got Fishy Winters in this. <laughs> okay, who can message this moron? Okay, say to him via his whatever the school is email address. What was he? He can't he can't come onto this thing as fishy. <laughs> He's got to come on by his school email address. On the class list, he's there. Oh, yes. He hasn't been to school. Like, that was like, the beginning of the year. Well, yeah, do something. Oh, Please. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so sure it is. <laughs> <laughs> so he must come and buy his school. His name is yes. Oh, yes, oh, please. Yeah. Thank you. concept of carrying capacity and that you realize that carrying capacity is not a consistent number. So if for example there's a year of extremely good rainfall and therefore there's lots of good green nutritious vegetation and therefore the number in a population goes up, 
of whatever organisms, impala or whatever, um, it's not going to be like that necessarily next year. And so next year, if there's not such good rainfall, then the numbers will go down again, and then the numbers will go up. So a carry capacity is not something, it's not the maximum. So if you put it on a graph of time in years, and number of organisms in a population, what you can see is that the number of organisms fluctuates. Now, if they give you a graph like this and ask you what is the carrying capacity of this particular kind of organism, then you choose midway between the peaks and the troughs, and you would say that that is carrying capacity, because the peaks are only during good times, and the troughs are during bad times, and so the definition of a carrying capacity is that can be supported indefinitely. And that doesn't mean till like the end of time necessarily, but it just means for a sustained period of time. It doesn't mean for four weeks or one year or whatever it means for a long period of time. Okay, and if carrying capacity is exceeded for a period of time, then what tends to happen is that the environment becomes degraded. Okay, so let's say, for example, and you know the carrying capacity of elephants in the Kruger Park is way, way exceeded at the moment. So for many years, there have been too many elephants in the Kruger Park, and it's causing huge problems. Okay, so, in what way does exceeding the carry capacity for especially a sustained period of time, in what way does that affect, negatively affect the environment? I'm not talking about the other living organisms. I'm talking about the abiotic factors of the ecosystem. Chips. Well, abiotic, so like the I was going to say the resources that the plant life would gain would decrease. Okay. But that's not too far. So, put it one step further and tell me what, what effect that would have on the environment. So, let's say, because you know that elephants both browse and graze. Mm -hmm. Okay, browse, graze. Okay. So, let's say, for example, because they're excessive elephants, they have overgrazed the area. You can carry that one step further into telling me the effect that that would have on an abiotic, the non-living factor. The soil. The soil. Well, to use the two days nutrients, how? How? Dry out. <laughs> it wouldn't be as fertilised. Why? Because everything, all the grass would be gone. So stop it like regrow. Stop. <laughs> okay, you you left you left out a link there. So if all the grass is eaten, so let's go to the an ideal scenario. Grass grows. Some of that grass dies. The nutrients from that dead grass is recycled into the soil. Okay, and so the soil doesn't lose its fertility. But that's not the, the, the one I'm really looking for. Grass cover on the earth. Or no grass cover on the ground. Heavy rainfall. No, on that side. Soil. See through, no dam, no nutrients, no dry. You kids are clueless wonders. Something. Squashed. <laughs> Mud. No! Keep going to saw and I'm getting excited and then you go mud. 
soil. Ah, so if you say soil. mud again, I'm going to hit you. Yes, mm -hmm. so soil. Put your mud, put your mask over your nose. My glasses don't work up and there's no. Yeah. 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 Okay, somebody to look with their head of hand. I was going to say that. No. <laughs> oh, okay, now I was going to say that it would like make the grass too, I mean the, the soil too wet to, like it would over water. Emily? The erosion. Yes, there is a god. <laughs> okay, soil erosion would occur. Now you know that soil is basically quite infertile except for the top layers. Anybody off the top of their head? I'm scared to ask this. I think you're all going to go, no, bud. <laughs> What's the correct scientific term for the top layer of soil that is nice top and soil. fertile? Top soil. Good. Yay. An intelligent child. Okay. And you know that the top soil layer is, in fact, very, very thin. Okay. Generally speaking, it's about that thick, but in some regions, it's much thinner. And you know that you make a paper, no, you probably don't know, to make that much topsoil requires 500 years. So, let's say all the grass is eaten, there's no cover on the ground, and this much topsoil gets washed away, that's a good 200 years worth of work to get that back again. And so through that period of time, the plants are not going to grow as effectively. So that's just one example of a way in which um, if carrying capacity is exceeded, the environment is degraded. Absolutely. Absolutely. Which impacts on the health of the organisms eating it. Okay. And you know things like um, the overpopulation of elephants in Kruger Park, you know that they've pushed down too many trees and therefore there are very few big trees left in Kruger National Park and that has impacted on animals such as, you know, this year's, the bird of the year in South Africa this year, is that? Oh! Is that bird of the year? Eagle. Eagle. Yeah. Eagle. Okay, 
So there are all sorts of things that you've got to consider when you consider um, the balance of organisms in the environment. Okay. Right, so are you happy with this term carrying capacity? Yes. Thank you for the one and only child you said. Yep. <laughs> okay, right. So it's an important thing. Capital K as the abbreviation. Okay, homework, quickly, photograph, go. No drops. Now, every time we finish an activity, we post the moment. Yes, but the other class only did okay. today, so I'll post it again tonight. Do you do this activity Nope, on your own. tomorrow okay and then the last thing that we're going to do today is we're going to talk about the two different kinds of reproductive strategies okay yeah so the first one is an R strategy please note that it is lowercase r sweetie you need to get notes Please just take Isabella's and tear off the last two thirds of them, throw them in the rubbish bin because she's complaining that they're too many. So we'll help her out by getting rid of some. Okay, right, listen carefully to this. Okay, so this is to do with how many offspring an organism produces when it reproduces. Okay, so just briefly, first of all, so if you look at humans, humans in their lifetime, one or two or three, but about 70 years ago, maybe eight. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but few people had more than 15. Okay, so, so let's say, for example, in general, the average um, number of offspring that a human has is three or six, I don't care, but it's not very many. Okay, those ones, are when they're born, are big relative to the size of the organism that gave birth to them, as opposed to a silkworm moth laying eggs. One little moth will lay about 500 eggs, and each of those eggs is really tiny relative to the size of the moth that lays it. Okay, so we're talking about size of the offspring versus size of the individual who produced that offspring. Okay, humans, a high degree of parental care for an extended period of time, which means that most offspring survive. So most of the offspring will survive to adulthood. Okay. All right. Whereas our strategy individuals, now just ignore this here because it's not going to mean anything to you at the moment, but when you do revise it after you finish the whole section, you'll come back to this and go, oh, I know what a pioneer species is. Ha, ha, ha. Okay. <laughs> our strategy, large numbers of offspring are produced. So if you consider that this would be a mass of eggs from one frog, actually it's probably a toad, from one toad. Okay, and this doesn't even show the total number because there will be more up there, more down there kind of thing. So that's a few hundred. Okay, and then these are the tadpoles that hatch. So that's also like a few hundred. So here, large numbers of offspring are produced. 
the offspring, or in this case in the form of eggs, it would obviously be eggs, but you can count this as offspring, are small relative to the size of the individual producing them. Very little or no parental care. So this is the ideal situation. You rush along, you pop out the babies, and then you maybe wave goodbye, and off you go. And you never see them again. Okay. Birth, like every year or every day. Mm -hmm. A few times a season, maybe. Although some of them might die after producing a um, bunch of offspring. Oh, that's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then the parents are born. Yes. So then they have to start the incubation. Yes. Yes. That also, that yes. Yes. Because they I they lay about um, fifty eggs. No, they lay a lot. Yeah, they lay a lot. They lay about fifty. Well, apparently, like only I think ten percent actually make it. Exactly to the ocean, and then when they get to the ocean, they eat eaten by things that are in the ocean. The birds okay. have open season when they hatch. Yes. Okay. Go. No. So if you know, there's probably like a few hundred of the things at the top there, but it was. Seeds or what are they called? Eggs. 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 So you ever walked on like the seafloor? You'd walk on dead, dead fish and No, 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 they would have disintegrated that. Because I mean you you've got red blood cells that die in your body all the time. Yeah, like Where are they? No, in your body. Where are they? Oh, they get disintegrated. They're disintegrated. And the substances are reused. But it's, it's not like these like disin disintegrate into themselves. They go into the sea. Yeah, but they will break the down sea. into the sea, into their yeah, molecules, yeah. and disperse in the sea. So you're not standing on it like a little egg. <laughs> what about sharks when they die? Big sharks. Eventually they'll all disintegrate. They drop and just because, I mean, they sink to the Yeah, because when you go drive through Kruger Park, consider how many animals have died there since Kruger started. Is the place made of mounds of dead <laughs> animals? <laughs> no, but if we're talking like 500, uh, what are they called? Yeah, but we're talking Seeds. size, hey? Seeds. Yeah, Seeds. so these are tiny eggs. Eggs! Eggs! Seeds. These are Seeds. tiny, babe. No, but um, if you're talking about like that many per fish per season, and look at how many fish are at the bottom there, every single one of those fish would have had that many. Okay, these are tadpoles. Okay, tadpoles. <laughs> they look like guppies. <laughs> oh, no, no, they're tadpoles. But anyway, I mean, no, no, I understand what you're saying. But realize that many of these are eaten. Is that the truth? That's so sad. Ma'am. But then there'll be frogs overrunning the world. It'll be like wading away to pass. Two frogs. Not a frog, but two. What's the difference between a frog? Big difference. Totally big. And then. No, 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 no. No, they've got dry skin and they've got a parotid gland behind the ear Fox and they Fox tend to lay their eggs in strings as opposed to individual and maybe this is a frog the, 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 um, in terms of classification there is a difference now i think fishy winters got got here because you had to raise them to the online students can't hear or see the eggs so <laughs> oh, at one stage of the game of cuddles yeah. ethan can you hear Yes. Okay, all right. So you must have sent that message earlier saying you can't hear. Sorry, it cut off, guys. Yep. Okay, yes. And? Yes. So they would be the same, same as the turtle thing. Yeah. So they'd be free, my child. They'd be like a hole and then they'd do like a mud kind of like. No, no, they just kick the sand off. chill by it. And when they hatch, they're like, come here, my children. Yeah. And they put them in their mouths. And yeah. Them. Before other ones eat them. Oh, the eggs in their mouths. Yeah. Not the eggs. Like oh, the eggs. Eggs. Oh, the 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 eggs
Oh, well, well, when you kids hear this, somebody said it in the other class. What? what? Crocodiles and the babies in their mouths. I think oh, most crocodiles no. don't show parental care. Oh, really? They eat their own kids. Okay, right. Guys, moving on, because most of us want to finish the trip <laughs> by the end of next year. Some of us. <laughs> okay, let's go. So little or no parental care in the R strategy, very high mortality rate because mommy's not looking after them. Okay? Early maturity. So these things have to be able to look after themselves from early. Okay. Very few survive. And you know that because you're not walking to school waiting to school from frogs. You don't say that in a test for exam, I'll beat you. Okay. Ma'am. Yes. So for example, like let's say a zebra or um, a giraffe, right? They only have one kid, but the thing comes out. No, what's a kid? Baby, <laughs> child. No, Animal. no, a goat. A goat. no, yeah, a baby goat. <laughs> if I get a question answered in the test or exam that talks about humans having kids, I'm going to give you a good humans swift round thought. What are we meant to say? Kids are children. Children! Oh. Kids are Anyways, so like, you know, um, their children come out and they run and they do their own thing. Mm. So like, they don't really give them that much parental care, but they also don't like just leave them off in the world. No, they do do parental care, but they're quite um, independent from the time that they're born. Yeah. But the mother will still do a lot of parental well, care. Well, there's no education in that art. Yeah, so what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about continuum. Okay. Okay. All right, so, K strategy. Please note, capital K, lowercase r. Lowercase r, capital K. Okay, all right, so, shown, for example, by birds and mammals, low number of offspring are produced, the offspring are large, parental care occurs, low mortality rate, Generally, not always, late maturity, and many individuals survive. Okay, you happy? All right. Um, and so, a cheetah, or a penguin, or a lion, or a giraffe, or a human, etc. Okay, and there's just a comparison of those two, and here's the RK continuum. Okay. And really, there are some things that fit in, in between the extremes. So here is an oyster, and an oyster produces 500 million eggs a year. How? It does the dirty, and then it makes eggs. And just... So obviously, okay, so what, you, what you've got to realize, guys, is firstly, the world is not overrun with oysters. Yeah. That means mm -hmm. that the survival rate is exceptionally low. Oh. And to maintain a population, do you realize that if there's a male and a female that mate and produce offspring, to maintain a stable population, only two of those have to survive. Yeah. Okay, because two of them made them, two of them have to survive, population is stable. Okay? Um, and in terms of energy input into producing offspring, these things have got to be really, really tiny. It couldn't be, if you consider the energy input into producing a human offspring. It's nine months of pregnancy. It's like okay. having to eat a lot to produce this ghastly little thing, etc., etc. So, yeah. Um, to the opposite extreme, a chimpanzee, they have babies about once every five years. Okay, so that's very few offspring. Okay, and then there's in between. But the general rule goes, mammals are closer to K strategies as are birds and insects and um, more the sea things. Well, crustaceans tend to be more towards the R strategy. Okay, happy, happy chickens. Right, off you go, go and do your work. Right, I mean off you go, I mean start working on your homework. Okay guys, do your homework. Be good. Bye. <laughs>
log on and be on the list.